In this video, we're going to show you how to perform PNF for the upper extremity. When performing PNF, be sure to pay attention to these key components. To make sure you facilitate the correct motion, make sure to use appropriate manual contacts, verbal cues, and apply your resistance in the appropriate direction. And as always, be sure to use good body mechanics. The proper position for upper extremity PNF is to have your patient supine. To allow freedom of movement, it's helpful to have the patient scoot their shoulder towards the edge of the plinth while keeping the pelvis towards the middle. The lower extremities can be placed over a bolster as needed. PNF movements in the upper extremity fall into two basic diagonal patterns. For each diagonal, there's two different movements, moving into glenohumeral flexion or glenohumeral extension. So we have two diagonals, each with two motions. That leads to four different upper extremity PNF patterns. Each of the four patterns is named by the motion that the shoulder joint makes. So along our diagonal one line, we have flexion, adduction, and external rotation, we refer to as D1 flexion, or extension, abduction, and internal rotation, which we refer to as D1 extension. In our diagonal two line, we have flexion, abduction, and external rotation, referred to as D2 flexion, or extension, adduction, and internal rotation, which is referred to as D2 extension. Sometimes it's easier to describe movements by referencing the face of a clock. So when working with the left shoulder, you can see that our D1 diagonal runs from 5 o'clock to 11 o'clock. When describing this direction, it's helpful to say we're either pulling the covers up as we move towards 11 or pushing them down as we move towards 5. Our D2 diagonal then runs from 7 to 1 o'clock on our clock reference. Moving towards 1 o'clock, our D2 flexion is often described as drawing a sword from its scabbard. The opposite movement then, D2 extension, would be like putting the sword back in its scabbard or moving towards 7 o'clock. Keep in mind there is a difference between the left and right side as far as which clock direction we're moving. So be sure to adjust your reference points depending on whether you're working with the left shoulder or the right shoulder. One of the biggest challenges with upper extremity PNF is maintaining the proper hand position as the patient moves their upper extremity through a wide range of motion. To find the right balance will take some practice and a little bit of experimentation. So let's go through each of these four different motions in more detail. Here you can see the key movements for our flexion, adduction, external rotation pattern. I'd like to point out that while the general pattern emphasizes all these particular movements, modifying manual contacts and verbal cues can be used to place emphasis on any particular joint that needs more attention. To help facilitate these particular movements, the clinician will be providing resistance opposite to these motions. So consistent with all PNF, precise manual cues are an extremely important part of ensuring you get the right motion. The clinician's distal hand will be placed over the palmar and radial side of the patient's hand. This helps facilitate wrist and finger flexion as well as elbow flexion. The proximal hand is placed on the distal humerus on an anterior and medial location. This allows the clinician to be able to cue the patient to move into flexion and adduction. If necessary, the clinician can guide the patient through the first couple of cycles to make sure they understand the movement. Alright, hand up, lift your arm and bend your elbow. Hand up, lift your arm and bend your elbow. Hand up, lift your arm and bend your elbow. Hand up, lift your arm and bend your elbow. At the other end of our D1 diagonal, we have extension, abduction, and internal rotation. As a general rule, the motions that occur will be the opposite of the ones that occurred for our D1 flexion pattern. One of the challenges with any PNF pattern is making sure your hands are in the right location to facilitate the proper movement. Depending on the size of the clinician and the patient, some modifications may need to be made. So for our D1 extension pattern, the distal hand is placed on the dorsal ulnar side of the patient's hand. If motion of the fingers needs to be emphasized, the clinician could place their hand over the dorsal part of the patient's hand and over the back side of their fingers. 
proximal hand placement then is over the distal posterior and lateral portion of the humerus. This helps facilitate the shoulder extension and abduction of the pattern. Hand up, press your arm down towards me and straighten your elbow. Hand up, press your arm down towards me and straighten your elbow. Hand up, press your arm down towards me and straighten your elbow. Hand up, press your arm down towards me and straighten your elbow. Good. Next up we have our D2 flexion pattern or drawing the sword. The patient's hand starts near their opposite side front pocket and ends up in flexion and abduction on the same side. The rest of the upper extremity is generally moving into supination and extension. Again, manual contacts can be varied slightly depending on which motions you're trying to emphasize. The distal hand should be placed on the dorsal radial side of the patient's hand and fingers. The clinician's other hand is placed on the proximal forearm, posteriorly and laterally. The starting position for this D2 flexion pattern can be challenging, so make sure you use good body mechanics to avoid injury. Be sure to use verbal commands that result in a desired motion and adjust if needed. Hand up, push your arm up and straighten your elbow as you go. Hand up, arm up, straighten your elbow as you go. Hand up, push your arm up and straighten your elbow as you go. One more time. Hand up, arm up, straighten your elbow as you go. Our last pattern is extension, adduction, and internal rotation or putting our sword away. While our shoulder is moving through extension, adduction, and internal rotation, the rest of the upper extremity is basically moving into flexion and pronation. As previously mentioned, make sure to use good body mechanics. For this pattern, the distal hand of the clinician is going to be placed on the palmer and radial side of the patient's hand. This can help facilitate our finger and wrist flexion. The clinician's other hand is placed on the anterior medial distal humerus. For this direction in particular, make sure you have a strong stable base as the patient is engaging larger muscle groups. Verbal command should facilitate finger and wrist flexion, elbow flexion, and pulling the arm across the body. Squeeze my hand, pull across as you bend the elbow. Squeeze my hand, pull across as you bend the elbow. Squeeze my hand, pull across as you bend the elbow. One more time. Squeeze my hand, pull across as you bend the elbow. Hopefully you have a clearer understanding of our four different upper extremity diagonal PNF patterns. We have our D1 flexion and extension, which is pulling the covers up and pushing them down. And we have our D2 flexion and extension, which is drawing our sword and putting it away. It takes practice to get comfortable with the upper extremity PNF patterns and hand placements. So don't get frustrated, keep working at it, and you'll have them down in no time.